Hi there 12. So this afternoon I'm going to record myself going through this lesson for you so you can use that this week for your remote learning. So here we are, we're talking about our last section of this unit which is Britain's position in the world. We go from Churchill's government in 1951 all the way through to New Labour in 97. So the way this video lesson is going to work is I'm going to introduce you to the tasks. Um, if you're happy with that what you do is you pause the video you jot down the answers to the tasks and then you restart the video so you can hear my explanation for the next section so um i'm going to start you off on this here we're going i'm going to talk you through um what i'd normally say at the start of a lesson to help you with your starter and then i'm going to set you off on your task so we're going to talk today about britain's relationship with europe and why that's controversial now i'm sure lots of you have lots to say about this especially considering the 2016 referendum. Now, more I've been thinking about it, the more I think that that, just, that referendum didn't really answer the big, big question. Now, we were given such a binary decision in 2016 to stay in the EU or to leave, and that didn't really cover the complexity of, of the question, because the question wasn't just should, should we take everything the EU is giving us or should we say, you know, give up on it. The question was really asking us how much control do we allow the EU to have over us and really the EU are saying now you either allow it to have all the control or none at all and that's what we're going for the latter none at all because we need to think about whether we we needed to before 2016 to think about whether we allowed the EU to control what what currency we had um, control our taxes control the movement of our people and how much authority they had over our laws in our country. Um, so this then becomes a much, much more complex question than the binary yes or no, in or out, that we were given in 2016. So this is just a really basic introduction to the controversy of, the, uh, of, of Brexit, really, and of uh, Britain's relationship with Europe. What I'd like you to do now is basing your knowledge on these time this this time period so from 1951 to 97 what kind of relationship do you think britain had with europe across this time and what we're going to do together is then to identify how that's changed over time so i'd like you to pause this video now complete your starter and once you've picked up the video what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk you through how i want you to complete the next task this PowerPoint will be on Show My Homework so you can use it straight out. Lots of people are printing it out and writing it in and then uploading it on with photos for me. That's fine. If you'd rather just write it on a piece of paper as we're doing normally in school, absolutely fine as well. Now here you've got two options. One is the Audio Pie podcast, which I'm going to talk you through how to access in just a short minute. But the other is using your, the pages in your textbook. Now, Probably at school we would do this together and we'd work through it, but obviously I can't really do that with you right now um, because we're so far apart. Um, so what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you this podcast. I want you to have a look, tell me what you think. I think the podcasts are excellent and I think they're really useful because they show you somebody else's opinion of what's gone on. And actually history is full of different people's opinions, um, so we need to make sure that we're listening to those. With that in mind, Make sure that you're logging on to join us on the Teams chat on Thursday at 2pm, please, because we are using that opportunity to create as close to a classroom environment as we can, with as much discussion as we can. And the more I see of you on there, more, more people who are on there as well, I think the closer to a classroom as we, can, we can get and the better I can support you. So, if you look at the next slide, you'll see the AudioPy link you'll see the username and the password there. Please feel free to share with any other student at Westminster City, but probably just keep it to our school because other schools will be able to get free access to that we probably shouldn't have populated too far. So here you go, AudioPie looks like this. You then click login, you type in Westminster City at, at AudioPie. If I can spell it, oh no, that's AudioPie.co.uk uk and then we type in the password which is audio and then we log in and presumably i've typed that correctly we'll go straight to the um next page which is to decide which subject we want to look into
So we go at the top, we click subjects, and you'll see here that there are loads of different subjects that you can choose. So I know that lots of you do sociology and psychology and a few of you do literature as well. So do click on these for some help with um, from experts on in their field. Here we are, history. Once we clicked on history, we're going to scroll down and choose what we do. So on here, you'll see there is a, a section for the French Revolution, the rise of, rise of Napoleon. Obviously, that's your unit with Miss Dennis at the moment. Do have a look at that. Um, and they're full of uh, experts, academics who will help you to, um, to understand the complexities there. But here is modern Britain, which is our unit. We click on that. And you can see that within this, we have loads and loads of tutorials too. Okay, we have introductions, we have then depth um, podcasts on different areas, Churchill, and so on as we go through. They're completely tailored towards your um, it to, towards your um, your unit. So we're going to click on this one. Overall analysis of the period. We're going to click play. <laughs> I'm going to pause that there because there's no point in me playing it through the video. So I would like you to log on and play this this audio tutorial, and it tells you about Britain's position in the world and it focuses on their relationship with the EU. So what I'd like you to do is use this this podcast, which is 13 minutes long, to help you to complete this um, table here. Okay. Once you've finished send it to me, take a photograph, upload it, however you feel it works, why. Then what I'd like you to do is look at, look at these four statements, find evidence to support them, and what we'll do is we'll use these statements to help us with our Teams chat next time. So I'm not expecting you to have done this for Thursday the 30th of, of, of April, I'm expecting you to have done it for the week afterwards, and we'll use these to help us um, answer these questions. The next thing I'd like you to do, so once you've done all this, you're going to pause a video, sorry, before you've done this, you're going to pause the video and then you're going to come back to it and we're going to go through the nuclear deterrent, okay? So what I'd like you to do then is, is start your new title, your new um, starter and have a think about why we might need nuclear weapons. Now, um, Jeremy Corbyn in um, the previous uh, general election decided or put across the point of view that he did not want to have nuclear weapons. He thought a trident, here we are, reference here in this diagram here, um, which is our class of, some, of, of, um, of nuclear warhead at the moment. He thought that it was not appropriate for Britain to have nuclear weapons. Um, now, his argument was that it was costing far too much money. They are completely redundant. They've never been used. And actually, if we take a step towards de-nuclear nuclear, to, to de-escalating our nuclear weapons, then that's going to make a, an example for everybody else around us. However, his, his critics argued the opposite and said, well, actually, because we have nuclear weapons, we protect ourselves better. They used the theory, the MAD theory, which some of you might know from, um, from GCC, which is called mutual destruction. If one person has a weapon and the other person has an identical weapon, that can both cause massive destruction, for example, nuclear weapons, um, then what we do is neither of us will use those. So the critics of Jeremy Corbyn, people who wanted to have nuclear weapons, would say that actually it's a better idea to have them just to prevent violence in the future, which seems rather ironic. You have the most violent weapon that can cause the most destruction and it stops destruction. So have a think about that as we go through. What I'd like you to do is like you to write down as your starter why you think Britain would want or maybe even need, depending on your, your approach, nuclear weapons. Now, this is all going to be a um, an essay based question, isn't it? Why has nuclear deterrent been controversial? So always think about the role that nuclear deterrent has played and why this might cause some people to to jump to one side of the argument to another. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find out from your textbook. This is a little bit of a um, of a comprehension task. I want you to find out for me 
about the nuclear deterrent. So you're going to find out why in the 1950s and 60s people wanted to have nuclear weapons um, or why people didn't. And the same for 1970s and 1980s. So you'll find this on pages 184 and 185. And what I'll do is I'll put that in the header here. So you've got that 184 to 185. You've got that saved into your, um, your document. OK, so you're just finding out the, this question for me and then I'm setting you an exam question most weeks, aren't I? So potentially this could be one of the ones that comes up and I think it'd be quite a nice argument to be able to create. Once you finish this, send it through to me and what we'll do is we will discuss it in Microsoft Teams and we'll work out how much, how helpful the audio, audio Pi podcast was and whether you think we should uh, we should carry on with this. Um, how useful you think the video lessons has been. So yeah, you know, just give me some feedback. Let me know what you think, and we can go going forward. Okay. So well done with this lesson. Please do ask me if you have any questions or if you need any help.